Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. Today I will show you my version of the Jedlik motor, which was invented by Anjos Jedlik. He was born in 1800 in Hungary and he was an engineer, physicist and Benedictine priest. He was also a member of the Hungary Academy of Sciences and the author of several books. As you can see, his motor is very simple by today's standards, but of course, at its moment, was considered an important development. The core of the rotor is made from a metallic rod that is bent into this shape. The reason for this shape is that it remains stable when we put it over a pointy object. If it were just a straight road, it will be not stable. There is a little hole at the bottom to help uh, position the needle or nail. And at the ends, I have a couple of washers. These are here to prevent the coil from falling apart on the edges. Next time you need a PCB for your electronics project, consider using the professional services of JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the world leader in PCB fabrication. You can order online. You just need to register, upload your Gerber file, and wait a few days for your PCBs at an unbeatable price. The commutator is made out of a phenolic plate that I cut into a circle and uh, you need to remove the, the copper, you need a strip at the middle in order to form the two sections of the commutator. Here you can see the finished rotor, it has uh, the two coils which actually are a single coil you start by uh, making the first coil and here you can see the wire that continues to the second coil. The direction in which you wind the coils is not important as long as both coils are wound in the same direction in such a way that when you apply current to the coils you have a north pole on one side and a south pole on the other, or vice versa, if you invert the polarity of the voltage. And here I have two pieces of copper wire, thicker copper wire, which are uh, to collect the current from the commutator. That is, these are the brushes of the motor. Let me explain how the motor works. As you can see, we have two coils. We have this external coil and the coil of the rotor. Both of them are connected to the power supply. This motor uses direct current. Here you can see the connections. The external coil is permanently connected to the current. So a magnetic field is formed in such a way that we have here a north pole and on the other side a south pole or vice versa depending on the polarity. On the other side the rotor has a polarity that is constantly changing. For example when it is in this position the brushes make contact with the commutator and we can have here a north pole and here a south pole. But when the rotor moves 180 degrees, now we have the polarity inverted. Therefore, what was a north is now a south and vice versa. When the rotor is energized, it will try to align with the magnetic field of the external coil. It will try to be at 90 degrees with this coil. 
But at this moment, the commutator changes the polarity of the rotor. And now, because of this change in polarity, the rotor will try to align to the new direction of the magnetic field. It will try to rotate 180 degrees. But at this point, the commutator again changes the polarity. The rotor continues to move because of its inertia. The polarity is changed and the rotor moves again, trying to align with the magnetic field. In this way, the rotor continues to move and a permanent rotation is obtained because the rotor is constantly trying to align with the magnetic field of the external coil. Now, let's see the motor in action. Let me turn on the power supply. I will use two bolts and I give an initial push and there it is. The motor is now working. Two bolts and as you can see the current is rather high, 700 milliamps, but the motor is working pretty well. I will increase the voltage to 3 volts and of course it rotates faster. There it is, the Jetlick motor. So there you have it, a very simple and historical motor that you can build and it will be a perfect project for school. I hope you liked this video, thanks for your visit and see you in the next one.